So we talk about the ideal ratio of aids for the rider. And when we talk about that, we're talking about what I would call the primary aids. All, we also refer to these as the natural aids of the rider. What we're talking about is the rider's seat, lower leg, and hands, and the way that that relates to the horse's body, and the way that the horse understands the message that we're sending to him. The way that the horse receives the message, and the way we want to think in our ideal ratio, is 80% seat. And when we talk about the seat, we're essentially talking about everything from our knees up. Because as we move our body, everything above, uh, say above the waist, influences our seat. Influences the weight in our seat and where our seat bones are, that sort of thing. So we want to ride with 80% seat, 18% lower leg, and 2% hands, all right? So, and again, that's how the horse receives and understands the message. So, you might see some riders up here kind of monkeying around with the reins. The horse is still only getting about 2% of the message that that rider's hoping to send across to them. There's a lot more of that message that comes through the seat, whether it's good or bad, whether we have a good seat or not, 80% of our message comes from there. Now, when we talk about that 18% lower leg, we want to think about how much lower leg is available to us to use. And that's going to depend on our confirmation, our horse's confirmation, and how those two pieces fit together. If you look at my lower leg, when I'm sitting here, I've got basically the top third of my lower leg in a consistent contact with my horse. It's just the way my leg drapes around his barrel around his rib cage. If I were to say I want to use a leg aid and I were to squeeze with my leg down into my heels, at the point when I bring that much leg into action, you see how that pulls my thigh off of the saddle, thereby essentially separating the 80% of the message that my horse is receiving. So when I use my leg, I need to be conscious with this particular horse that I'm only using the upper third of my lower leg. So basically the bigger, meatier part of my calf. On a different horse that maybe has a longer rib cage, that might be different. On a horse with a smaller barrel, a smaller rib cage, I might even have less leg available to me to use. Now this is, uh, in this position, we'd be considering this my inside leg. Our inside leg hanging straight down, influencing the horse's shoulder and rib cage. My outside legs slightly back, influencing the horse's rib cage and haunches. When I move this leg into the outside leg position, as we'd call it, slightly back to influence the hind quarters, we see that I have slightly more leg available to me. So depending on which leg you're using, you may have more or less available. Again, inside leg straight underneath you, outside leg back slightly. The leg that we have to use is going to be dependent upon our confirmation as it relates to the horse's confirmation. The moment I squeeze down with too much lower leg, I'm separating my seat. Good man. And in this position, you can see more clearly, if I start to squeeze down into my heels, I'm separating my knees, separating my thighs from the saddle. Again, that's taking away the 80% of the message the horse receives through the seat. So when I use that leg, I just want to use that upper piece of my calf.